Introduction to Complex Numbers. Let's have a look at this quadratic equation. x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0. So if we look for two factors that multiply to 3 and add up to 2, we'd probably struggle to find some. So we'd go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve this. So we get x equals minus b, which is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 3, all over 2 times a, which is just 1. So we get 2. Simplifying this, we'll get minus 2, plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 12 over 2. And we get x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 8 all over 2. And we've got a bit of a problem here because we have a square root of a negative number, which up until now we have not been able to solve and we say that x has no solutions. But now we're going to define something where we actually can get solutions. And we're going to define that the square root of negative 1 equals i, where i is some imaginary number. Now, the term imaginary number is, might not be the best because we're going to define it as a number, but that's what, that's what we're going to go with because that's what it's called. And the imaginary number i is going to be the square root of minus 1. And if we were to square both sides here, we could square both sides and we'd get the square root and the square cancelling out. So minus i equals i squared. And this is going to be uh, helpful to us probably a bit later. But for now, if we've defined the square root of i being the square root of minus 1 being i, uh, we can go ahead and actually solve this equation now for x. Because what we can do is we can say that this equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 times 8. And just like how we simplify a normal serve, we can do a bit of work here. So we can say this is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 multiplied by the square root of minus 1 all over 2. And this is minus 2 plus or minus root 8. Now, we've already defined that the square root of minus 1 is i, so we can go ahead and write that in, all over 2. Simplify this a little bit, saying we get minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 2, i, all over 2. And dividing everything by 2, we get minus 1 plus or minus root 2 times i for our solutions for x. And these are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. Now, we're going to define a complex number as having a real part and an imaginary part. So it's important to know that when we define i being the square root of negative 1, that's an imaginary number. But a complex number consists of both a real number and an imaginary number. So, for example, if we have a complex number z, this will consist of a real part and an imaginary part. And we can write it like this, where x is the real part and the yi is the imaginary part. What we can say here is we can say that the real part of z equals x, and the imaginary part of z equals y, where both x and y are real numbers. So it's important to note here, when we talk about the imaginary part of z, the imaginary part is equal to y, not y, i. It's just the real part it's the real coefficient of the imaginary number i. So for example, 
we have a complex number z equals 1 plus 3i, we can say that the real part of z equals 1 and the imaginary part of z equals 3. If we have a complex number z equals 2 minus i, we say that the real part of z equals 2 and the imaginary part of z equals minus 1. So not 3i and not minus i. Also, if z was a complex number in the form x plus yi, z would be purely real if the imaginary part of z was equal to 0 and that would mean that y would have to equal 0 and z would be purely imaginary if the real part of z equals 0 and in this case x would have to equal 0. Mm -hmm.